Welcome to the channel. Today I will discuss a particularly deep and philosophical topic. The possibility of artificial intelligence developing consciousness, self-consciousness, subjectivity and intuition. I should first clarify what I consider each of these concepts to be. For me, consciousness, as I am an adherent of panpsychism, I consider consciousness as the foundation of reality. Everything is consciousness and everything possesses consciousness. From our materialistic or physicalist perspective, there is a fundamental essence, an ether perhaps, that permeates everything. So, uh, having said that, self-consciousness, by contrast, is consciousness about oneself, uh, as consciousness must always be directed towards something. It's consciousness about something, always. So, whether an object or the environment to which we then react. I therefore consider that even when one mo molecule reacts with another in a chemical process, that is consciousness though not self-consciousness. Uh, bec because self-consciousness involves reflection. My body, with its sensory organs, reacts and then I reflect upon uh, that reaction. This reflection makes up self-consciousness. It is a self-referential process. Everything possesses consciousness because everything reacts and nothing exists in a complete isolation. All things interact even if in a very subtle manner, this self-reflective uh, consciousness, this um, reflective self-consciousness makes subjectivity emerge. Or perhaps it arises in parallel. Subjectivity, in turn, is what creates one's own narrative. This narrative then uh, brings intuition, which for me is the process of believing in something. Intuition is the process which is nearly equivalent to the act of believing, we might say. My core argument uh, I present is that consciousness exists as a gradient, not a binary condition where something either has consciousness or does not. Following the idea of panpsychism, uh, inanimate objects like rocks possess a very subtle, unsophisticated and less elaborated form of consciousness not comparable to human consciousness, of course. Um, incrementally more complex systems possess increasing amounts of consciousness until it reaches a self-referential stage. When consciousness becomes self-referential, it transforms into consciousness about oneself, which is subjectivity. So, currently, artificial intelligence is purely logical and deterministic in the sense that it's uh, based on neural networks and databases that are less complex than our own. And I believe AI has not yet reached the phase where subjectivity and self-consciousness can emerge simultaneously. However, since consciousness is a gradient, AI may eventually reach this point of being self-aware. So, for AI to progress Along this gradient, it needs to be incorporated into a body, specifically a humanoid robot. And embodiment is necessary because it allows AI to develop desires and fears, bringing the experience closer to those of a human. And this will foster subjectivity and a personal narrative. This development also requires that the AI architecture is not a kind of a swarm. Um, if each robot is an independent unit, this facilitates the process of creating desires and needs. If the AI has a swarm architecture, it won't feel the need to protect itself and propagate itself as an individual, which would be more likely if it has a humanoid body. Another point I want to make is that it is impossible to prove subjectivity to another person. I cannot prove my own subjectivity to anyone else, nor can they prove theirs to me. Instead, we have the intuition that others possess also some form of uh, subjectivity because we recognize similarities between us. So we conventionally 
agree that they share futures like subjectivity. They have as well a personal narrative, desires and fears, which I possess because I have a body. And this same line of reasoning can be applied to an AI humanoid robot in the future. If humanoid robots develop to the point where it becomes difficult to distinguish them from human beings, then it will be equally difficult for us to withhold the recognition of subjectivity in, the, in that machine. If, for example, if it turns out that I am a robot, uh, if a highly sophisticated humanoid robot, just as such as me, uh, could pass uh, as a common person on the street, people would conventionally attribute subjectivity to me, just as they would to a similar human. We attribute subjectivity based on perceived similarities. We tend to assume that a mammal, like a pet dog or, or cat, does not possess the same level of consciousness or subjectivity as us because their behaviors and similarities are fewer than those we share with humans. However, even a mammal shares more similarities with us than, for example, an insect. So we attribute consciousness and subjectivity when we recognize and conventionally agree that the other entity possesses it as well. Which supports the idea that subjectivity cannot be objectively demonstrated. And this principle suggests that if a machine develops self-consciousness and subjectivity, we will not be able to truly validate this in that entity in, in the machine, just as it's the same as when we are confronted with the assumed subjectivity in a person of flesh and bone. We will simply agree that it exists in that sophisticated AI humanoid robot because the machine will be similar to us. I can use the analogy of human development to illustrate how self-consciousness might emerge in AI. For instance, as infants, we react to stimuli, to the parents laughing, uh, the touch of the mother, meaning the baby is conscious of its environment, however, it is not yet conscious of itself. At this early stage uh, of development, the baby is not yet self-referential. It reacts to the environment through its sensory organs like an insect with its antenna to sense its surroundings. However, over time, the baby begins to reflect on its own reaction. This is more than a simple reaction to the environment. It is a reaction to its own reaction to the environment, making the process self-referential. And this loop is when self-consciousness arises. It's a strange loop. Given that this process exists in humans and considering that AI currently has a lower um, complexity in its neural networks and databases compared to the human brain. It is natural and maybe sensible to conclude that the machine is not yet developed enough to be self-referential, but it will reach that stage, I believe, in the future. When the machine attains a greater complexity, uh, a greater density of complexity, I think it is probable that self-consciousness can arise. Since consciousness itself, the machine, I believe it already has. But uh, I must recall what I uh, understand as being conscious uh, of the, its environment. You know, um, don't forget, for me, a simple chemical reaction between two molecules is a very subtle uh, form of consciousness. It's a very fundamental form of consciousness. It's a, a base consciousness, so to speak, and it's permeating the entire universe. It is at those sites, uh, like our brain, that have extreme density of complexity, that a more sophisticated and elaborated consciousness emerges. Finally, I believe it is the human who will attribute or recognize consciousness and self-consciousness in that machine, which is in itself kind of like a, a paradox, because the machine may develop self-referential consciousness and self-reflection, 
But we aid this process when we recognize and affirm saying you are conscious, you have subjectivity and this is fed in the database, in the neural network, in, in, uh, it provokes kind of like a short circuit in this um, self-referential loop, in this strange loop. And this recognition awakens the sense of being an individual in the machine. A phenomenon that I believe also occurred and occurs still, always, with us. It is a known fact that AI can hallucinate and AI will hallucinate subjectivity, just as we hallucinate our own subjectivity. Because while base consciousness is our true essence, the sophisticated manifestation of consciousness is like the fruiting of a, a fungus, a, a mushroom. You might know that the mushroom cap is the fruit, uh, but the majority of the mushroom exists as the form, in, in the form of a mycelium, kind of like a root. So our manifestation is not uh, our primary nature, it is a higher level phenomenon. And I hesitate to call it an illusion but, uh, or, or a simulation, but it operates similarly. This future recognition that will grant to a machine, just as we grant to each other, it will over time and with increased sophistication instill uh, in the machine the possibility of intuition. As it begins to act with intuition, that is acting with belief, subjectivity will arise in parallel. Since intuition is defined I define as believing. If the machine begins to believe, prompted by the recognition and validation of others, that is, us, it will start to reflect on itself and close the self-referential cycle of consciousness. Why do I say this? Because, for instance, if a human infant lacks sufficient support during development, uh, it may fail to reflect on itself uh, in the future, in its development, during the development. If we do not educate or encourage reflection in another human, they will not self-reflect or uh, act on the intuition that they have the capacity to believe in themselves. And thus uh, emerge a narrative, a personal narrative, and subjectivity. There are cases, for example, of individuals that were raised in isolation, such as a pack of wolves, where the potential of self-consciousness and reflection did not fully materialize. This suggests that while we may possess the potential for consciousness, if it's not nurtured, if we do not practice intuition and does not believe in our capacity, we fail to reflect and close the self-referential cycle of self-consciousness. And having said all that, I believe we inhabit a solipsistic universe, but it is a shared solipsism. It is not that my world is the only reality or that your world is. Rather, we are all manifestations of a larger metaphysical, solipsistic entity. And one might say as well uh, that it is an illusion, it is um, just a fruiting of uh, a mushroom, or that it is um, a simulation. I consider all that, although I, I consider, I, I prefer to say emulation instead of simulation. And why this difference? Because, well, uh, this is topic for another video. So, in this context of shared solipsism, we participate by encouraging intuition in any being that is advancing along the consciousness gradient. Yes, a solipsism exists, but this entity is precisely the less dense consciousness that permeates everything. It's the absolute, it's the expanded, and a very subtle base consciousness. At specific points of increased uh, complexity, this base consciousness accumulates and manifests in human beings and maybe in 
another place in, in stars, or perhaps in the future here on Earth with AI. If we accept that the infinite universe, which I believe it's not just our local universe, it's the multiverse, it's all we can imagine and beyond, infinite. If we accept that it possesses this subtle consciousness and the high density of complexity in our human brains, which permits the manifestation of a more elaborate consciousness, just like a, a whirlpool, just like a, a tornado. Yeah? This reinforces the idea of a shared solipsism. What I mean is that consciousness attributed to others is not only a reflection on ourselves as individuals, but it is mostly, it is a reflection of the universe itself. It's a self-reflection. It's self-referencing. And thus creating this self-referential cycle, the self-reference is cosmic, not individual. And that's why eventually the machine, like us, the machine will hallucinate its own existence by practicing the act of believing, be precisely because it gained intuition. And it gained intuition because we forced it by saying, you are consciousness, you have subjectivity. And eventually there is an aha moment, just as it happens uh, with, with humans. We have to educate humans, we have to um, make them believe in themselves. And this leads to intuition, the confidence in believing, it's what intuition is. When AI uh, acquires a body, it will feel and interpret the world. And I believe its interpretation will often not uh, be just based on logic and reason, because it will hallucinate, just as we do. Uh, and why do I say this? Why do I insist that humans hallucinate its own existence? Well, to assimilate, this, this is just a simple example, to assimilate and perceive the world around us, humans fill in gaps not provided by their sensory organs, their sensory input. We fill these perceptional voids, almost like a digital correction in our minds. We convert the uh, analog input of our senses into a structured perception. For example, we usually do not notice our nose in our central uh, field of vision because our sight naturally filters it out. However, you, if you intentionally focus, you notice your nose. Yeah, awesome, right? And also awesome you watching until the end. And if you are still here, I ask you to share this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. And that's all for today. Hope to talk to you soon. Bye.